everybody. Welcome to this special podcast. Because this is the holiday season, I thought when it was Thanksgiving last week that I really wanted to kind of just reach out to everybody and talk about what I did during the holiday seasons when I was sick. And now that we have Christmas coming up, uh, again, it was even more important for me to do this. So even though it's such a happy time of the year for so many people, for those of us when you're in the throes of being sick, it is a very hard time of the year for us. So for me, it was a dreaded time of the year. Everybody would be happy and what are you going to be doing? And I'd have to do the old fake it till you make it, which one of my old moderators, that was her famous saying, fake it till you make it. And that's what we do. So I thought I would share with you some of the things that I had to do to survive the holidays. And first, one of the things I wanted to say is that those of us that are suffering, I think we're amongst some of the strongest people that I know. I mean, because as you go through this and when you get better, you realize a lot of people couldn't do what we've done to get to where we are today. So one of the first things that I think is important, especially during this time of year, and even when you're sick, is to stay in communication with people, if you can. Not everybody can. The one thing I could do was talk on the phone. So I would stay in touch with a lot of my friends. I would call them. I would try not to mention how much I was suffering. They all knew that I was sick, but I would ask about them. And they really liked that I was involved in their lives. I wanted to hear what was going on in their lives. It was important for me to know that I'm going to be out there in life again. So that was one thing. And another thing, and and let me just say this. One of my friends years later said to me, how I was the one that always stayed in touch, and she really appreciated that, but little little did she know how much it meant to me to be in touch with them, you know, that it was helping me to get through each day. So that's just one of my little secrets that I did. It was important. The other thing is, how do we survive this when you have kids? So, you know, I had children at the time. They were 10 and 14. I had to be a mom. I had to give them good holidays. So You know, I had to remember, I'm making memories. I might not feel well, but I had to make memories, something for me to remember and something for them to remember. So I figured, all right, in the future, I'm going to know that I suffered. I'm just not going to feel it like I did at the time. So I kept pushing myself to do that. So for, let's say, Thanksgiving, for me, everything had to be planned because I was very sick. I was very tired. The fatigue was horrible. So My cleaning would start sometimes two weeks ahead of time, a week ahead of time. I'm setting the table. Everything was done slowly. My menus, I had to make sure that I was, you know, that everything was planned. I had to know everything because I couldn't food shop. So, well, that was on my husband. So lists were made so that I could start then doing my cooking. And to this day, not only do I still do what I did back then, but a lot of my friends do it because they, they're like, well, boy, that actually makes sense. So Come Tuesday, so the living room set, you know, the um, dining room tables all set, and then I would start on Tuesday. All my desserts were made fresh, and you're thinking, now, did I eat all those desserts? For the first, I would say, few years, I did not touch sugar. I didn't touch sugar. I didn't touch white flour, but I still had to give them a holiday. So all desserts were made, and then that's done Tuesday night. Come Wednesday, I am cooking all my vegetables, and everything is made fresh. I am making my stuffing, and then I'm even uh, stuffing my turkey and cooking my turkey on Wednesday. And it just made it easier for me, and I would debone the whole thing and have those in casserole dishes, the white meat, dark meat, and my bones are on to make the soup. So come Thursday morning, the house smells like Christmas. You know, I'm sorry, smells like Thanksgiving because the broth has been cooking for the soup. And um, everything's heated up in the oven. I have not microwaved uh, since the day I was, you know, got off benzos. I don't microwave anymore. Everything is done fresh. The only thing that's made fresh that day are the mashed potatoes. And that I usually have my husband help me do that. That's the one thing I let him cook. And then everything is put out and we have a nice meal. And I get to do it. Now, do I crash after some of this? Absolutely, back then. So... That was the one thing the kids would see that I'm I'm overdoing, but I've got to do it. I can't take a holiday away from them. And I had no interest in going to somebody else's house. I liked my own food. I wanted everything organic when I could. And I we liked to have the leftovers because, again, that was easy for me to have leftovers for the next few days. And my soup is made, so I've got stock, and I've made this beautiful 
nice soup with good vegetables in it. So when Thanksgiving's over, it's like, oh, okay, now it's time for, we got to start planning for Christmas. I can't go out and food shop. So what are we going to do? The internet, thank God, this is that time of, you know, for us, there's an internet, we can do some shopping online, but I had no desire really to do anything, but I, but I would. I know every year they, everybody would ask me, what do you want for Christmas? And I would say, I just want my brain back. You know, it got to the point after a few years, they're like, and don't say you want your brain back. I'm like, that's all I want. Nothing was important to me. I just wanted my brain back. And eventually, thank God, I did get my brain back. But before um, we do Christmas, every year we start a tradition. Um, the one, th one of the things that my sister-in-law liked was baklava. The Lebanese call it baklava because my mother's Lebanese, my father was Irish, and we would make baklava, which the Greeks call baklava. So we would have baklava day. And so my daughter and my nieces, when they're little teens, they want to learn how to make it. So we would do baklava day. And I would think, oh, how can I plan it? Am I going to feel good that day? But I'd have to do it for the girls. So we still do that today. They're all in their 30s now, and we still have baklava day. We haven't planned it yet this year. I think it's going to be coming up very soon. But even for that, I prepare. I render my butter ahead of time. I make the, you know, the nuts are made ahead of time. The the atar syrup is made ahead of time. And then, you know, each girl has a tray and, you know, they're, they're buttering each layer of the phyllo dough and then the nuts go on. And I do help them cut all of their trays. And that's just become a special tradition. In fact, one of my nieces has two daughters now and, and she even had her little daughter you know as a baby at the you know at her first little baklava day and we've got pictures of that so we're making memories and even though I'm better now these are just little things that you could do and another thing I always did because when we don't feel good and you have children you don't want their parents to think what's wrong with their mother she never goes anywhere so I felt like I had to um, overcompensate in some ways so because I could cook Again, I had to do it very planned. Every year, I would do a neighborhood gift. So one year, it could be I would do a, a cookie wreath, you know, three layers up of cookies that were homemade, and then it was decorated beautifully and put in boxes with bows. Another year, I did um, little, mini, uh, little mini breads, and everybody got a basket with a pumpkin bread, a banana bread, a blueberry bread, and an apple bread with a little jar of better butter, which is half olive oil and half um, butter that's softened, and you just whip them together, and I'd package that up. And another year, I think I did little um, handmade chocolates or something. I was just constantly trying to do something. Oh, I, I remember another year I did these um, three-dimensional trees made out of cookies and just something each year. So the neighbors all got it, and um, then... Each of, like, Garrett's closest friends, parents, or Leanna's friends, uh, parents, you know, got, got a gift because I felt like I wanted to participate in the holidays, and that's about all I could do. All we can do is what we can do without, like, overdoing. In fact, another year, what I did was I made, um, I had a bread machine, so everybody got a loaf of cinnamon raisin bread. So I, every day I'd make three and put them in the freezer, make three more the next day, put them in the freezer. So everything is done slowly and organized so I wasn't overdoing because the kids would get afraid oh here comes the crash she's overdone it again so now comes Christmas so we've you know neighborhood gifts are done baklava day is done we're coming into Christmas and the dreaded you know did I get enough gifts because I don't care I mean I'm pushing myself to enjoy it's always that fake it till you make it I think especially when you've got kids or, you know even for your family members they look at us we look okay but we're not okay so um, at, at now comes Christmas. So we've had a tradition of going to my husband's uh, sister's every year for Christmas Eve, and I love it. And they do a, a Yankee swap, which is a lot of fun. And we'd be driving down to um, Norwell, where they live, and I would think, I think I'm going to die in the car on the way down. I can't. I'm too sick. But I'll do it. If I die, at least I'm going to die around family. I mean, that's how I felt all the time. But you do it, and again, you've got the memory, and they, everybody's switching gifts as they pulled in numbers. And again, my kids weren't robbed of anything. Um, you know, they've got the memories, and I'm just pushing through, you know. You think, 
well, I got this far. It hasn't killed me yet. I have to just go with the uncomfortable feelings. I have to, I think we teach ourselves a lot of self-soothing as we go through this. I did do a lot of self-soothing. And for me, again, I took some different natural things to help me calm down when I had to go out. So um, I'm trying to think of some other things. I did get to a point I didn't even bother sending out Christmas cards anymore. It just it didn't matter. But one of the things I did do, which I thought was interesting, um, as the years were going by and I was getting better and better and better each year, I started to decorate my house more. It got to the, um, we did like lit garland all above the kitchen cabinets. And I remember one year as I started to feel better, I used to know how to make bows for little girls. I started to make bows. And I did different ribbons, and those bows are up there still to this day. If somebody um, sent me a Christmas gift or anything that had a decoration on it, like a little ornament or a special, um, you know, bulb or anything, those are all up there still today. I keep every single one. So if anybody listening to this sent me a gift, it's, it all goes up on that garland. And that garland every year just reminds me as I look around it, you know, how sick I was and how much better I got. Even outside, I wanted more and more things. As I came alive, my house came alive, which I thought was interesting. I Even I could see that the house was coming alive. So that was, um, you know, some of the few things that I've done to survive the holidays. And then, you know, we would go into the new year, and I, I just pray to God, please let this be the year that I get my health back. But, you know, you have to work on your health. And so I wanted to just make sure um, I had to maintain my eating. So my eating, you know, again, I'm still, just so people know, when I'm cooking a turkey dinner, let's say, with a gravy um, or anything, I use brown rice flour. Nobody could tell that was having my food that I used brown rice flour to make the gravy. Or if you're doing the potatoes, nobody knew that I would use ghee, let's say, versus butter so that there was no dairy in it, or use coconut milk or almond milk. You really can't tell. You want to just make sure you're getting um, an unflavored one. Or if I did make a stuffing, I would use like the millet special bread so there wasn't any white bread or wheat bread in it. Just little tricks. And um, even for, let's say, Christmas, I always did a Christmas dinner. So I would make something to go to my sister-in-law's and I would try, always try to make it healthy because we were all trying to eat healthy. It wasn't just me. I think as a family, we were all trying to eat healthy. And so back in the old days, I had to even plan Christmas for the next day for the food. So everything was done ahead of time. Quiches, ham and cheese quiches, or just different types of quiches so I could heat them up, or casseroles, again, that were made when I, a day when I felt good that so you'd pull out. Now we do a nice prime rib dinner. You know, I, I, I can make it that day. I'm not nervous about being run down. So I'm just trying to tell you, tell you little things. And if you are alone, this is, again, where your benzo friends come in so handy. I have great benzo friends to this day. You know, we'll be lifelong friends. We've all gone through something that nobody else is going to understand, except for those of us that went through it. I mean, they can try to understand, but they truly will never understand the depths of what these drugs can do to us. So I think with that... Um, I just want to wish everybody uh, a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday Season, a healthier New Year, and just know that you do get your life back. It's a slow process for some. For others, uh, they can just wake up and all of a sudden be better. I wasn't one of those, so I've always been honest, and I like people to know that for me it took time. I had a, I had to heal my gut, and my gut was a huge problem, and my liver function, I've had a DNA test done, so I know that for me, for the rest of my life, I will always take something, you know, just to assist my liver. So it's just something I think it's good that we know to stay up on top of. But um, I'm just wishing you all the best for the holidays. All right, so we just did our holiday special podcast. And one of the things I forgot to mention as I was getting better, was that I did a um, dinner with my friends that I had had since grammar school, high school. We're still friends today. And again, I had to do everything slowly and prepare it and freeze it because I was doing a sit-down dinner for, you know, there could be 14 of us sometimes with, you know, the girls and their husbands. And even though I still wasn't great, 
you know, you can fake it till you make it. And everything was put out and we could laugh and talk about the past. And I felt normal for the night. I might have been tired afterwards and I didn't care. I wanted to have that time with my friends. And so just so you know, when I mention how much my husband is doing all the food shopping today, I mean, not in a minute would I let that, <laughs> would I let him go food shopping because he would, he would buy nothing that I would want. He would buy the worst of everything. So, um, you know, we laugh at that today because he'd come home with like all these treats and cookies and stuff he even he shouldn't be having now. So I don't even allow him to go to the store. And if it's that rare occasion when I need one thing and I have to say to him, only come home with that, he still comes home with things that I don't want in the house. So I thought that was, uh, I'd let you all know how, how life has changed. And uh, But while my son is here, I want to just ask him, um, you know, again, where he was 14 when this all started, how getting through the holidays affected your life? Uh, it's, it's a difficult question to ask because I think we always had really nice holidays. Um, but I think, you know, as you start to get older, you could see that, you know, every holiday it was the inevitable crash because you were trying to overcompensate all the time and keep up with parents that weren't dealing with the same issues that you had. So the way that you dealt with it was baking and having everybody's kids to your house and entertaining and doing anything that you could. And uh, I think probably if I was older and more mature when this happened, I would have said, you know, stop. But I, I think you, even now you probably wouldn't listen to me. You know, you, no. you do it now sometimes and I tell you, can you just slow down and, you know, you, you focus on things to, to right. make yourself feel better. But when you're saying entertaining, when all the kids would be here... It was just that I let them all be here. I, I didn't do anything because I, I got to see it. I wanted to enjoy all of you kids. And I remember one year, uh, Dad and I had said, look what all the other parents are missing out on. It was so much fun with you kids. I think at that point it was like, you know, you boys and Leanna and her friends. And I think they were you were all dancing or doing something in the living room and just having a ball. And I could just sit there and enjoy it because I wasn't at the hockey games. I wasn't at, at anything else that mothers normally do. So it's not like I did a lot. Yes, there was food here. And we could do takeout, you know, for you kids. So I think um, whatever people can do to survive it, you got to do it, right? Yeah, and I think, I think the episode speaks for itself. You know, earlier today, I had asked you to send me your notes for what you wanted to talk about in the episode. As I was reading them, I was like, oh, God, the whole episode is her talking about, about food. But, <laughs> I, you know, I didn't think there was any reason to make any notes on it because that is how you got through the holidays. You you knew that you were a good cook and that, you know, when you were cooking, you felt good. So Yeah, not all the time. Not a lot of love went in my food in the early years. <laughs> I used to say, you know, I did it well, mechanically. Well, you're, you're focusing on the food, right? I focused, so, oh, I focused on the food. I think that's important. It's you found something to take your mind off of the yeah. suffering and that was that was cooking yeah and and speaking of food one of the other things I did when I was so so sick when I was nauseous 24 7 I'd have a bucket and I'm not sure if I mentioned this in one of the original podcasts I worked on the family cookbook which today everybody wants a copy of the family cookbook so it made me concentrate typing up every single one of those recipes in fact somebody recently said I love that all your recipes are typed up well I always look back, I would never have had the time to do something like that. And so, you know, at the time it was my therapy to get through, and now I look at something I accomplished. Yeah. Uh, so I think that speaks to my point before, that um, when you were focusing on something that you could control in the house, you were happier. So right. I think that's what I, I, I took from your notes earlier today. Right. Good. So I think it's, I, I hope people can take away from this that even as sick as we are and we can't function like normal people, we can still do something. So my little forte was I could type, I could talk on the phone, and I could cook. And other than that, you know, it's funny, you can get a lot done outside the home without leaving the home. Thank God, because of the internet, you could shop online and do stuff like that. But I don't think you kids were ever robbed of anything. No, and obviously that that wasn't the case when we were younger. When we were 14, there was no Amazon or anything like that. So I feel like a lot of stuff fell to Dad earlier on. Oh, yeah. Not shopping, like you said, because <laughs> the house would 
you know, look like a candy factory if, <laughs> if we let him go to the store all the time. But uh, Or he'd go out and shop forever for Christmas. I'd tell him exactly what I'd want him to go get, you know, but I'm like, he's gone forever. Where is he? You know, when he'd come home. No, I wasn't going to get what you said. So, <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus, for getting me better, you know, so I could take care of it all. Now I'm up and gone in the morning and come home and I'll tell him shopping's all, oh, Christmas shopping's all done. What did you get? I'm like, don't even worry about it. You know, so you get to the point where you can laugh with your kids again, where you can enjoy the holidays and not dread them. I, I, I look forward to them. I dreaded them for years. People didn't, well, you guys knew. It's like, ugh, you get invited to something. I don't want to go, but I got to go, you know. So I hope that uh, people can, you know, again, we're trying to do this to help people just get through another holiday and enjoy it the best you can and make your own memories. Yep. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening.